Hey guys, Dark Ability here. You can always catch me at www.twitch.tv forward slash Dark Humility for six to seven days a week of Diablo 2 action of all kinds, all manners, all varieties, all everything. Playing D2R Hardcore, Groove Found. We've got a strong group still going on more than a month after release, and we're killing it for a third crafting session. Um, we had some pretty killer finds from the second one, and the first one, which we also posted on YouTube already. Um, we did an insane crafting session here. That is the subject of today's video. We crafted 214 caster amulets and 170 blood rings. With the power of the shared stash and my mules and the mules on everyone else and everyone's ability to find these crafting materials we're able to do a lot of heavy lifting once again no trading outside of our group so our group's been going hard we've been doing some awesome stuff but before we get into what happened here we crafted all that stuff we're going to show you guys an aftermath and we're also going to first kind of show you guys how it works. Just a really short demo of how to craft in the game and the two best crafts you can possibly do, period. There's a lot of other crafts in the game that are really good. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about other crafts or what other crafts you love to do that are not these two crafts. But if you're looking for pure economy, like trade economy, and you're looking for things that are easy to make and very likely to get really good rolls these are your best bets and one in particular is a really good bet which are caster amis but yes um first let's kind of do an overview of what we want to do in order to craft so in order to craft jewelry which is what we did today we need a geed's fortune and an edge to reduce vendor prices. We can reduce vendor prices by up to 30% if our Geeds rolls perfect, which what this one did, it rolled perfect vendor prices. The other stats aren't perfect, but it doesn't matter. And the edge always rolls 15%, so it's just her Tau Am in any old three-socketed bow. You can buy this from normal Charcy. And this one right here, you're gonna have to find that somewhere. But if you can do that, you can reduce the vendor prices, and then when you go, to gamble, your prices are much reduced. You'll notice here, if I take out the geeds, the prices go up significantly. Um, we need, since we are crafting amulets and rings, we need to gamble amulets and rings, especially the amulets for the appropriate item level on the amulets, which I'll go over in a second. But in general, whenever you're buying bases for crafting, even if you're just buying from his normal section and not his gambling bar, you're gonna need gold and you're gonna need vendor reduction. It makes it really efficient to do this. You can try to pick them off, 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 uh, up off the ground, but then you have to mule them and you have to mule them back and you have to find individual bases on the ground and it takes way longer than just gambling them in almost all cases. Not all cases, but gambling or buying them, but yeah, you can only gamble rings and amis though, and in, in the case of amis, you absolutely need to gamble them to ensure you get a high quantity of those high level amulets. But first, we'll just buy two of them. We're gonna do a demo of how to craft two blood rings and two caster amulets, which are the subject of this video today. And so, there it is. Bought it with my optimal geeds and my edge bow, lowest price possible. Easy stuff. All right, so let's go over cast rate amulets first. So cast rate amulets always roll five to ten percent faster cast rate, ten to twenty mana, four to ten mana regen. No matter what, on top of three to four additional stats that would normally roll on a rare amulet. So it could be anything. It could be a ten FCR, flat ten FCR, on top of five to ten FCR which means you can get 15 to 20 FCR, which is the major feature of a caster amulet. It's the only amulet in the game you can roll 15 to 20 FCR on, um, period. And even if you don't roll 15 to 20 FCR, you can roll all the other stats as well. 
including two class skills, two class tree skills. You can roll more mana, more life, all riz, MF, double MF, magic find, whatever. You know, you can roll all kinds of very useful stats. You can also roll a lot of useless stats. You can just roll a bunch of garbage. In general, when you craft anything, including amis, most of the things you're going to craft are garbage. It's just how it is. You're going to craft a lot of junk. It's not going to be very usable or very good. You might craft some things with some decent stats, maybe some FCR, but it's not going to be good in general. And you'll see that when I craft these two amulets here, they're not going to be amazing. And one thing I should mention about amulets is that the best way on Battle.net to craft amulets, period, which amulets literally have the best economy because caster builds are insane. So many caster builds need really good two skill FCR amulets, especially high FCR amulets like 15 to 20 are absolutely bonkers. Those are very hard to roll, but even like two tens are insanely good, especially if they roll other insane stats on top of it. So people need those, they always need them. Amulets literally have the best economy. And the way to do it is to make sure that you have a level 93 character to gamble and craft with. If you gamble amulets with a 93 character, the amulets will roll between an item level of 88 and 97. 88 is the minimum item level that I can gamble from an amulet. And because of that, um, if you average out the item level of the minimum amulet I can gamble, which is 88 with my character level, which is 93, you get 90 and a half. 90 and a half is over 90, so it's 90. So 90 is the level that is required for a caster amy to roll two class skills, so like two paladin, two barb, two sorceress, two necromancer, whatever. And that is literally like the best stat, the most important stat you can roll in an amulet it also has FCR and mana and whatnot because it's going to give you a ton of power on top of everything else that can possibly roll in the amulet. So, like, two paladin skills, for instance, is insanely important for a hammerdin. Two necro skills can be used on multiple necromancers, but it can use it specifically can boost all of your stats across all three skill trees. Just insanely good stuff. So... The way crafting works is it takes the item level of the base item and it averages it out with the character level of the character you are crafting with to create a final item level for the crafted item. So it's literally my character level, the item level of the amulet divided by two. So we wanted to make sure that it's at least over 90. It's got to be at least 90 or higher. Because 90 is the minimum level for two class skills. That goes for rare amulets too. There's no exception. So uh, that's why you want to gamble at level 95 if you can. If you're going gambling for amulets like rare amulets. So that you always have a chance to roll at least a 90 from gambling. But for the sake of crafting all we need is an 88. Because we just need an average of 90 with my character level. That's all we need. Alright. So... Caster Amies, once again, best economy, everything else. Here's how crafting works in Diablo 2. Very short rundown. You always need a random jewel. The jewel does not matter. I'd like to emphasize the jewel literally does not matter in any crafting recipe. It could come from anywhere. It could be any kind of jewel. It could be rare. It could be blue. It can even be a facet, believe it or not. And it doesn't influence the role whatsoever. It doesn't matter. You just need some kind of a jewel that's just garbage. You need at least one rune. The rune is different for every crafting recipe. It doesn't matter what it is. It's different for every single one. In the case of Castor Amies, Rao runes are your best friend. You need these. And every caster recipe, so you can make a caster like boots, you can make caster gloves, caster belts, you can make caster anything, requires a perfect amethyst. So blood recipes require a perfect ruby, which we're going to do in a second. Um... And of course, you need the base item. So we're doing caster amulets. So we did amulets. Amulets gambled on a level 93 character, which guarantees that two class skills is possible. It doesn't guarantee you're gonna roll two class skills. It guarantees that it's possible, that it will attempt to roll for it. 
And that is what is important when trying to maximize your odds of getting those godly two class skills, 20 FCR, 60 life, 20 all res, 25 MF ambulance. I mean, it's possible, right? It's possible. It is. It's, it's not likely. But. Matter of fact, uh, just two class skills and 20 FCR is one in 1,100. And to get a specific class in 20 FCR, well, you can you just multiply that number by seven. You can see it's pretty rough sometimes to get the exact amulet you're looking for. But overall, you can roll some pretty solid ones. Let's see what we get if we roll two of these, though. Um, I rolled, so now we're going to hit 216 amulets total today with these two here. All right, let's see what we got. Wow! Shape shifting. You do not need faster cast rate on a shape shifter. So that's kind of lame. Um, it just happens on a lot of your stuff and whatnot. And uh, as you can see, no good. And this one just didn't roll any skills at all and only rolled six FCR. So uh, both of those are pretty disappointing, but that's normally what happens, which is why typically you want to store up lots of crafting materials. Or you just want to keep crafting one at a time as you get them. But I recommend just storing them all and just doing them all at once. So that it encourages you to actually get some really good amies. We're about to do an overview, of course, of the best amulets out of 216 today um, in a moment. And, of course, the best rings out of 172 once we craft these two here. But, alright. The second... Craft in Diablo 2 with the second best economy is a Blood Ring. It requires a much higher rune than Raoul, which is Soul, but Souls are pretty common in Hell. It's pretty rough to justify using Soul Runes in the beginning of a ladder because usually they're used for insights and lures and everybody needs them. Um, so this is not something you do typically early ladders, make a Blood Ring. Something you maybe think about maybe a couple of weeks in or maybe at least a week and a half in. Cast Ramies, you can start doing even at a lower level if you don't mind not getting two class skills. Maybe you can get like two fire skills even, two cold skills at a much lower character level than 93. So there's some pretty insane stuff you can do with that, of course. Um, but as for rings, as far as rings are concerned, you do not need a level uh, 93 character. You don't even need a very high level character at all. Um, matter of fact, a character in the 80s will do just fine and is even preferred to have like a level 83 character so that you can avoid stats that will make the rings require a level 96 to use. There are certain poison stats on these crafts like 6% life leech and bone spirit charges on an amulet that will make it require level 94 through 95 and there is also a stat on a ring which can make it require level 96, which is 6% mana leech. Um, unfortunately, the amulet ones are unavoidable because you need a high level character to get the two class skills. So that's a very high level requiring stat is the two class skills. So no matter what, you're sometimes going to get some of those stats. The rings, you could avoid it by having a lower level character, like I said, like level 83. Um, because I don't have an 83 character and I just have this higher level character. Um, I wanted to craft with here today. Uh, this is just the best option. I'm just using my zealer here that we got to 93 after losing that uh, 96 sorceress uh, to the freeze crash bug. So uh, it's pretty cool. We got another 96 character, uh, 93 character. But yeah, rings. You do not need a high level character. It doesn't matter. You can roll every good stat possible, and at a really high level, like on my level, you can even roll. 6% mana leech, which is not necessarily a good thing because it requires an insane level to use. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's just not a lot of people are going to be able to use those. You can roll some really insane level 96 rings, but at the same time, it's just not a lot of people use them. All right, so blood rings. Once again, I gambled it from Geed like normal. Every recipe, once again, requires a jewel. Every recipe requires a different rune. In this case, it's Soul Rune, which is a little tougher. And Perfect Ruby. Every blood recipe requires a ruby. So the reason why we do cast for amulets is because we can get 15 to 20% faster cast rate potentially, which is the only amulet in the game that can roll that stat, and it can make for insane cast for amulets. The reason why we roll blood rings is because blood rings have the best base stats on them. So it's 10 to 20 life, 
one to three percent life leech and one to five strength those stats on top of the base stats that the uh, rings can roll normally can produce rings with up, up, upwards of 60 life rings with upwards of 30, uh, 11 life leech and rings upward of 25 strength and even a combination of all those stats and more so just like the amulet it rolls those three stats every time but it also rolls the normal ring stats that would roll on a normal rare ring every time you do it so it's pretty awesome stuff and we're just going to slam these so we're going to just demo these rings here we'll make two rings here and see what happens hit 172 rings today 172 plus 216 man i guess that's uh 388 crafts today not so Group did an awesome job, including myself, finding all these awesome crafting materials. But yeah, so rings. Wow. So this is a pretty nice illustration of what's possible on a ring here. You got 58 life on a ring. That's pretty bonkers. It's pretty bonkers. Um, absolutely bonkers stuff. And then, of course, there's this ring that didn't roll anything that good, but it rolled 46 life. Both of these rings rolled more life than you can get on a standard rare ring. All those double stats are more than you can get on a standard rare ring, and it's why we also want to roll these. Uh, one thing to note is that you cannot roll... There is, there is no crafting recipe that can roll 10 FCR automatically on a ring, which would be ideal. But that'd be insane as well. It'd be pretty broken. Um, so you have to just get lucky and get 10 FCR in some cases. If this ring rolled 10 FCR, this ring would have actually been pretty nice. Poison res with uh, almost 60 life and 10 FCR would be crazy. But, you know, as it is, it's still okay, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. Pretty nice rings, though. Pretty pog, yeah. Pretty pog rings. Um, we can maybe uh, give them to some other people if anyone wants them. But... Yep, there you go. There you have it. That's how you craft Casper Amies and Blood Rings. Now, let's go over the aftermath of our giant crafting session today and show you guys kind of what's really possible crafting these crazy kinds of jewelry. So, once again, we're not trading outside the group, so we're going to use these within the group. Everyone's going to pick up some of these awesome items and we're going to kill it. So... Let's go over the amulets first, because we did the amulets first. <clears throat> this is probably the best amulet we rolled today. Now, it didn't roll 15 plus FCR, but remember, it always rolls 5 to 10 FCR. And we got two class skills, so we got our two sorceress skills, which is really important. And then we rolled two stats that both rolled over 10. We almost rolled perfect mana on the base roll high mana regen, and only four off perfect all resistances. So on hardcore, that is an insane amulet because normally you actually want to wear a storm shield, which doesn't have faster case cast rate on it, and a sorceress needs 105 cast rate. So just having five cast rate or higher allows us to hit that five cast rate, and then we can get 100 cast rate on the rest of the gear, and then the rest of these stats are just absolutely crazy. That is definitely the craziest amulet I think we rolled today. There's no wasted stats whatsoever. Um, every stat is useful. Every stat is solid. It's definitely a beautiful amulet. Um, it's just one of the things that's possible by rolling these. But remember, we rolled 207, no, 216 amulets. So these are the very best out of 216. Now, we've rolled better ones in the first crafting session, which I also have on YouTube. You should check that out. We had some insane rolls in that crafting session, especially in the amulets. The rings were pretty disappointing in that one, but the amulets were insane in that first one. You can definitely get some crazy stuff. This was insane, too, but we didn't get as many insane amulet rolls as you might expect or as you might think is, is possible. Um, this is another very insane amulet. Two fire skills. 10 FCR is always good. Especially if you're running spirit or you're getting 5 FCR elsewhere. 
um, to hit that 105 breakpoint. And then you have fire resistance. So fire resistance, period, is the best resistance you can get on jewelry because you need it. Because if you're wearing a storm shield or a spirit, guess what? There's no fire is on this. There's no fire is on those unless it's a paladin spirit. And even then, it's still less than uh, the rest of the res you can get on the paladin spirit. So fire res is usually going to be like the best res you're going to want. So that's a nice, nice amulet. Two skills. If you're a fireball sorceress, you're really going to like that. All right. This one, another example of a strong two sorceress 5 FCR amulet. This one's 2 6, but this one rolled cold res, poison length reduction, and magic find. Not as, I wouldn't say it's not as impressive as this one. This one is so insanely stat heavy, it's crazy. You, know, you almost never roll something this stat heavy, but that one, solid amulet, solid amulet. Yeah, it's got magic find, and sorceresses love magic find. That's something I should make a point of here. Very good shit, very good shit, very good stuff. Um, this is another nice 2 5 once again. We're playing hardcore, so these are even more valuable to get that 2 5. On softcore, it's maybe even more important to get 2 10 because on a lot of these amulets, because you're usually going to use spirit, and if you use a 35 FCR spirit, usually. Uh, yeah, usually that faster cast rate is going to require 10 to reach the 105 breakpoint, unless unless you're hitting 200. And at that point, you probably need a 15 faster cast rate amulet anyway. So that's a, that's always an issue. But that's a pretty solid one. As you can see, we got fire res, two cold skills, and five faster cast rate. So cold skills are also very useful. It's a very common sorceress type. It's a very strong amulet. This one was really sick too. This one was our best barbarian craft, and if you're playing a uh, a Zerk Barb, all you need is five FCR with teleport. If you have Enigma, and you need like a hundred FCR on swap, and you can hit a hundred and five cast rate on the barbarian, and you can teleport just as fast as the sorceress. And with that much life and that much fire is and that much mana, that Zerk Barb is gonna be very tanky. Um, also, it's just got nice stats in general. The only downside of this amulet, though, is that normally on that kind of build, you really want to prioritize Magic Find. And having Magic Find on a caster amulet would be pretty nice in that case we don't have it. Um, that is a nuts amulet. The only downside of this one is it doesn't have 10 FCR in order to hit certain breakpoints. But once again, usually going max block on hardcore anyway, and a Necromancer has a breakpoint at 75 faster cast rate. So if you hit 70 FCR on the rest of your gear, and you have five FCR on your amulet, not only that, we have tons of mana and tons of decks. So dex helps us hit max block. That is a sick max block Necro amulet. It also has cold res on top of that. Extremely good, especially when you're not using spirit. So normally max block means you're not getting all that crazy mana on your shield. So that is a really, really good Necro amulet, one of the better ones for sure. Um, this one, once again, solid for that 75 FCR Herald of Zacharum build is usually what you want to use that with. Um, if it had 10 FCR, you could use it with a spirit build for 125 faster cast rate. But with a five faster cast rate, we got two paladin skills, five faster cast rate for a hammered in, and we got dual res and magic find. Magic finds always really good stat right there. Um, if you rolled 10 more FCR, I think that's exactly what our hammered in our group might have been looking for, but unfortunately, uh, maybe you rolled poison res, maybe you could have gotten rid of the poison res, gotten like a apprentice stat instead, rolled 18 faster cast rate, would have been insane, but not quite. Um, it's really hard to roll a good amulet, like I, I can't stress it enough, it's just really hard stuff. This one's solid too, so this one, this one needed to roll another skill to be like absolutely crazy, but... Just rolling one skill plus 15 plus FCR means it's pretty useful on a Necromancer if you need that 15 faster cast rate. That one skill will also boost it as well and give you plenty of faster cast rate on top of that and allow you to have decent damage. It also has some res as well on top of that, so uh, not bad. Uh, solid for hitting 75 faster cast rate with max block for sure. Um, you're just going to be missing that skill. 
This one's definitely one of her better crafts for sure. Um, this one's a 210 faster cast rate, which is usually what you're looking up for, uh, hardcore or softcore in a lot of cases. And it rolled, guess what? Fire res. So the fire resistance, once again, best resistance, 20 plus on that sucker. Very solid amulet, very solid amulet right there. Can't go wrong with something like that solid. Um, a lot of people always ask, you know, what makes a good cast rate? I mean, normally the question you have to ask yourself is, does it help me hit a solid breakpoint on a solid build with a caster Amy? And does it, is it, or potentially better than Mars? And if it's not better than Mars, is it only a little bit worse than Mars? And the answer is that it could potentially add more damage than Mars and you don't need as much res as Mars has, then the amulet's probably pretty solid. Pretty much all of these amulets meet that criteria. Now they can outperform Mars in various scenarios. Not all scenarios, of course, though. Alright, so. Mm. Alright, so. We got a pretty crazy amulet up in here. So, Sins do use FCR, but for teleporting. So, a lot of people don't know this. So, normally with traps, you're using attack speed. So, you don't actually need faster cast rate for a just a Sin that uses traps. But, 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 but. When you have Enigma, the most efficient, efficient trap sin builds in the game use Enigma. And they need the faster cast rate to hit the teleport breakpoints. The major breakpoints are 65, 102, and then there's like 174, I think. So you do need cast rate on an Enigma sin, and any kind of cast rate at all is pretty solid with two assassin skills. Having quad res on top of that is really good for stacking res on a hardcore assassin. So that is a very solid amulet. Um, obviously, if it had like 17 faster cast rate, it'd make it even easier to maybe hit, um, or at least 15 and make it easier to hit 102. But you really can't complain with that stack fire is in that 18 attack speed. That is very, very good amulet. Yeah, some people in chat are like, give me that! <laughs> I know, some, that's a pretty sick aim. I would say it's definitely one of her best. I mean, these are the very best at a 216 chat, YouTube, and everyone else. It's just how it is. The very best. The very best. All right. This one, this one right here is a little bit of a disappointment. We actually did roll a two cold skill 20 FCR one in the first round we did. This is a one fire 20 FCR. Now, when you're trying to hit 200 faster cast rate on a fire sword, which can be a lot of fun and have, be very effective for certain kinds of farming, uh, you need that 20 faster cast rate um, amulet, or at least a 215 amulet. Um, just having over 215 uh, FCR on a fire skill amulet is really nice. And having one skill makes it to where you're at least increasing your damage. But it would have been nice if it rolled another one. Still a very, very good amulet for hitting breakpoints and having additional damage. This one, pretty nice, pretty nice stuff. Um, once again, for a hammered in that just needs five faster cast rate, like on a Haas build, this one's got 17 strength and it's got some res on top of that. It's not insanely impressive. It would have been so much better if it rolled 10 faster cast rate, but once again, it's pretty good stuff. This one we just straight up gambled. Um, if fire res is the major issue, which it almost always is on almost every build, um, <clears throat> this can, in some cases, at least compete with Mars, uh, which is pretty neat. We just gambled it. If it rolled 10 to faster cast rate, this thing would have been bonkers. Uh, we did roll some amulets that were similar to that with 10 faster cast rate in the first round for a Necromancer. That's not one of them. 
This one we gambled as well, just a high magic find or decent magic find with two sorceress skills. It's a pretty cool gamble. Um, sorceress is always need magic finds, so if you don't need a meph and you don't need all res on Mars, stack some magic finds, stack some skills. Good stuff. Usually the plus three skill MF amies are better, but it is what it is. Um, once again, the three trap amy would be better in this case with 88 life, but two assassin skills with 88 life is actually pretty cool. Um, that's just a ton of life. If you don't need the res, it's a pretty nice amulet. And then we also rolled this one. Now this one, unlike the other Barbarian Amy, is actually a bit more tailored to, work, to what the Pit Zerker actually wants to do, the Pit Berserker Barb. You want Magic Find on top of 5 FCR and 2 Barbarian skills. The other one doesn't have Magic Find, but this one's Magic Find rolled low, so it's not necessarily insane. Um, but... It's very solid for that Zerker Bar build. Remember to check out my Berserker Bar build and more if you don't know what a Berserker Barb is on Maxroll, d2.maxroll.gg. Get it. Go to Maxroll, your brand new, spanking new amusement park for Diablo 2 knowledge and for building your characters before you even build them. You got a D2 planner and everything. Check it out. It's insanely good stuff. And uh, you can learn more about the builds. I wrote some awesome build guides myself. Check them all out and get it. Learn to be a master. All right, so we got another two cold skill amulet with faster cast rate and fire resist. So once again, same deal as the other cold amulet. We rolled two of these suckers, pretty nice. And then, once again, another Barbarian Amy that meets the minimum requirements, but also has solid res. So there you have it, chat, YouTube, and everyone else. The best amulets with 216 rolls. We had less rolls in that first round, and we got some 215 plus, and we got some... Ins we got an absolute bonkers 210 Necker Amy that time as well. Uh, you can check that out, of course, separately. But you can get some crazy amulets. Um, the one disappointment I would say of the amulets this time was that we did not get any two class skills with 15 faster cast rate that really were any good whatsoever. Um, we got a couple of plus ones, but that's about it. Wow, man, Cole Bleated giving it out to the community. Damn, Xanifying, Balian, Uncle Loud Pack. I know there's no alerts on at the moment because uh, I'm making a video. Mind Burst and D Quintosh. And uh, M. Fan Nico Tenti. Man, everyone getting Xanified. Awesome stuff. Guys, let's get some Eyes of Xana in the chat. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, dude. That is incredibly generous, man. Killing it. All right, let's get into the rings, though. Let's get into the rings. So we did 172 rings, including these right here that were just demos. And this was probably our most insane craft yet. And period, out of the whole crafting session today, someone in our group is getting a crazy ring. Crazy ring. This is a crazy ring. There, It is possible to roll a crazier ring. Don't worry, I do know. The attack rating could have rolled life on top of that. We could have had like 50 plus life. Could have rolled like another res, it could have rolled all res. It could have been even more insane, but let me tell you, this is a very hard ring to roll. And it is an insanely good ring. For any caster, any this is any caster's wet dream right here. Fire res, 20 plus fire res, which is the res you really want. Faster cast rate, 20 plus strength. Remember, you can roll up to 25 strength, so it's pretty close. 17 life. Now, this ring is 100% possible on a rare ring, which is interesting. And it's not always the case. Like, if it rolls 21 strength, it wouldn't be 100% possible. But getting these stats on any ring is just crazy. Almost got 20 life on a ring with, like, the res that you want with almost 20 strength and a 10 faster cast rate on top of it. This, I would say, is literally our best craft. I rate this one gold stars. Five gold star craft right here. This is really what you're looking for. Um, unfortunately, I'd say this is like a four gold star craft. 
But I don't feel like we got any five gold star craft amulets in this particular round. We got some last time, but that's a five gold star ring right there. That is an insane ring. Um, crazy survivability, crazy stuff, just crazy ring. Stone of Jordan would be more damage. Someone in the chat asked about Stone of Jordan, but you need cast rate sometimes to hit those faster cast rate breakpoints. So faster cast rate is very important sometimes for making sure that you're doing the highest damage per second on a caster build. Uh, it's all about efficiency. So your damage number isn't the most important thing in Diablo 2. It's about how fast you can travel with teleport. It's about how fast you can cast the skill. And, you know, there's a lot of other things into it as well. So it's all about speed and the time you're able to do the runs. So having a godly faster cast rate ring is insane. Of course, having a skill is more damage. You can't roll a skill on a blood ring, by the way, so that's impossible. You also are never guaranteed 10 faster cast rate, which makes this ring even... It's one of the things that makes this ring so insane. All right, this ring is just decent by comparison. Almost all these other rings are gonna seem kind of just decent by comparison, except some of them. Some of them are pretty nuts as well. This one is just decent. It rolled some extra energy, life, faster cast rate, and magic find. Magic find 10 FCR rings are always good. This one's also decent and rolled some strength with faster cast rate, life, and mana. It also rolled attack rating so you, in life leech, so you could use this on a melee build that also has enigma or charges for casting uh, for higher mobility. This ring is pretty bonkers. So this is definitely one of our top five rings along with our top craft period of the whole session. This one, wow, just wow. That is a crazy ring. 100 plus attack rating, 6% mana leech, 7% life leech, almost max rolls on these suckers. Strength, high cold res, and life. No stats wasted, insane melee ring. There's only one problem though, as I'm sure some of you guys on YouTube have already identified. It requires level 96. It rolled 6% mana leech, which always requires level 96. If it's 5% mana leech, it's far more reasonable. But it's not. So you need a level 96 character to use the ring. But if you get a level 96 whirlwind barbarian, you get a level 96 zealer, you get a level 96 anything that needs attack rating, really. A jab zone, whatever you want. Even a, even a, even a Javazon <clears throat> without a faster cast rate. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. So that is a that is an insane ring, but it's gonna take. A, I don't even know if anyone can currently use it, so we'll hold on to it for sure. Really good stuff. All right, this is also one of the craziest rings out of 172 rings. This ring is pretty bonkers. If you don't need attack rating, this ring pretty much hit every hits every note you want. Hit it almost got max strength 100%. So max strength is literally 25. You can't even roll this on a rear ring. You can't even roll nine life leech on a rear ring either. So it got double strength, including. So when I say double strength, I mean the base roll plus the strength that could normally roll on a rear ring. And it got such a high roll in both of them that it's actually higher than a rear ring can even roll. And it got double life leech as well. So it got nine life leech. It got mana, life, and magic find. That's a pretty sick melee ring. But the only, like I said, the major drawback is uh, is no, no, uh, no attack rating. You could use this on something like a smiter that doesn't 100% always need to use zeal and doesn't always rely on attack rating. Um, there's definitely a couple of like hybrid builds I could think that could be pretty nice on as well. Overall, that's pretty neat. This is actually a ring that I'm thinking of uh, using myself to maybe replace this ring. This ring is insanely solid, so it's kind of be hard to replace. But one thing I really like about it, it's really hard to get magic finds sometimes on a zeal build. And this ring will double magic find. So the only way you get 20 over 15 magic find on a uh, on a rare ring or a craft ring is you need to roll magic find twice. It also rolled 
um, good life leech, so it rolled max life leech on the base roll. And it rolled almost 120 attack rating, and it rolled mana. So for a Telly Zealer, this ring is actually pretty solid. And I can uh, I can use this to boost my magic find and uh, boost my yield on this character quite a bit. I think I'm going to use this one myself. Um, could have been more insane, of course. You know, we could have gotten a better life roll and a better strength roll on the base rolls. But overall, this ring is really solid. Uh, there, there's not... You can't really say it's a, a wasted stat whatsoever. Alright, this is also one of our strongest rings. This is definitely in our top five. This ring, once again, it's kind of similar to this ring, but in the other way. This ring actually is impossible as a rare ring, though, because it rolled 44 life. So it's double life, and a rare ring can only get up to 40 life. So this is 10 faster cast rate, 5 strength, 44 life, and even some light res and MDR. Um, that is a nice ring. It's a very nice ring. It could have been nicer, of course. Could have had higher light res. Could have had something other than the MDR. Could have rolled like 20 strength and had 25 strength. But um, very, very solid ring right there for a caster ring. Uh, this is also a very solid caster ring. Unfortunately, it, does, it has a lot of wasted stats on it. But um, if you use it on a melee build, it has attack rating. It's got man. It's got life. Very good teleport ring uh, for a melee build. Even has some life leech. And it has a huge amount of mana. So that's a pretty solid ring right there. Definitely could be better in a lot of ways, but very solid ring. This ring is just solid for a lot of reasons. Just as a melee ring, if you just don't need tons of life leech, you just need some. You got all res, you got attack rating. That's literally maximum attack rating. And you have almost maximum base magic find. So this was this rolled the, uh, the, 10, the 5 to 10 magic find stat on top of the... I think it's the um, 5 to 15 magic find stat to get 22. This one, this one's just solid with one of the magic find stats alone. So that one's just a solid one for sure. Yeah, 10 to 15. Okay, yeah, that's what it is. My bad. Anyway. Um, okay, so this one, this one's crazy. That is a really good ring. I really like this ring. This ring rolled almost max base strength, rolled max base life leech. It rolled the maximum mana leech before it requires level 96, which is really good. It rolled pretty high amount of dex. I mean, it's medium dex. It's not high dex, but it's pretty good dex. It's got max life roll. It rolled maximum fire is. The only stat that's usually not needed on this sucker is half freeze duration, but overall that ring is extremely good for a dual leech ring. If you don't need, if you don't need AR, there's a lot of classes that don't need AR, like a Javazon that would really like to put to slap this sucker on right now. Very good ring. This one is also a very good ring. A lot of our best rings, by the way, were rolled like in the last like 15, 20 rings. It was pretty insane. This is another one. It also includes this one that was literally rolled in like the lat, the final 10 rings. Um, this one rolled really high cold res, really high light res on top of life, strength, and faster cast rate. Very solid ring right there. We had an even better one in the last round, but uh, it died on the light sword, which uh, it had like insane fires instead of cold res, and it had even more life. It was just crazy. But that one, that one's pretty good though. And this one's also solid uh, dual each ring. Very solid dual each ring, very solid stuff. Dual each, AR, life, man, and fire is. And um, this one, this one's actually kind of nuts. So for any kind of teleport melee character that already has mana, some other source of mana leech somewhere else on the build, since it doesn't have mana leech, it's a little disappointing, but having 10 life leech on top of 10 faster cast rate to reach another like teleport breakpoint on top of attack rating to just improve the hit rate and everything else, top of strength and life and even minor res but you know it's still something um that is a very nice ring usually what you're looking for when you tell uh, in general fa faster cast rate leech rings are insane because you can use them on javazons you can use them on melee builds just in general so any kind of faster cast rate high leech ring is really good a faster cast rate like dual leech ring for instance is even more insane like uh 
Yeah, there's just really insane stuff. But anyway, that is it for the very best of the rings and amies. We crafted, once again, I think if I count them up, it was a total of 388 crafts today. Blood rings and amies, which are literally the best crafts you can do. Some of my other favorite crafts, though, are like caster belts and blood gloves. I really like those. And, like, blood arm mats are really cool. But, like, like I said earlier, let me know below if you uh, what kind of craft is your favorite craft. Um, some of you guys probably like maybe even, like, hit power gloves are really awesome to see. So, uh, it's pretty awesome stuff just in general. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Um, just want to give you guys an example, though, of a pretty nutty ring. We actually had, we actually rolled two of these types of rings, I think, last time. And this one's the 96 ring, so the, the one that's actually getting used is the one with 5% mana leech. Um, has similar res, though, but you can see, though, what's possible in some of these rings. Um, just imagine using that on a, uh, on a Tele Javazon. Absolutely crazy. Um, you don't need attack rating on the build, you get crazy mana leech, you get life leech, you get faster cast rate, you get high life, and you get crazy, crazy good dual res, which is especially good in, like, world stone. Those two res are really good. So, you can see what's possible, though. We've actually crafted some other crazy stuff as well. Um, a lot of the craziest stuff, though, like I said, I, I ripped one of the crazy rings and, like, um, we have a lot of the craziest Amis and Rings from previous sessions already on, you know, other members of the team, on their characters themselves, and we're killing it. Having a lot of fun crafting, and probably going to do at least one more crafting session of these kind, I don't know. Keep looking for these crafts, may as well just keep crafting, right? Uh, it's going to keep improving our group's gear, and it's awesome stuff. But without further ado... If you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the ring and amulet overview and of course the explanation for how to do it in the beginning this was kind of like a tutorial plus like you know a demo of like what is possible with a lot of crafting the more crafting materials you have the better just know that you can find all these crafting materials yourself if you farm areas like the secret cow level travancore arcane sanctuary lower cross super chests are really nice as well and there's a few other areas like Chaos that also tend to drop gems, runes, and jewels. All the things that you need to make these crafting recipes work. And of course, um, enough gold to make it happen by gambling them. And uh, you can make a lot of trade value. You can get rich off of crafting. It's no joke. Um, not everyone crafts, not everyone knows how to, but everyone wants... The crafted amies, everyone wants the crafted amulets. I gave away countless ones that were decent, besides the ones I even showed you guys that were solid, because they're all solid. They all have very good uses, and um, there's a lot of ones that are junk, of course, that they're just total garbage, but it's so easy to get ones that are at least decent, and ones that are really good, like the ones we showcased today, and the ones we showcased in the first round, and the ones I showed a couple of them from the second round as well. They're just pretty bonkers stuff. So yeah, get it, chat on YouTube, good luck on your crafts, uh, let me know what your best crafts are on D2R, or even not on D2R, if you guys want to share some of your crazy stuff, I've, I've crafted crazier stuff before, not on D2R, I've crafted 220 amulets that are just absolutely bonkers, um, like I crafted like a 220, like 10 all res paladin amulet before, like, you can get some really crazy stuff. You just have to keep going at it. Um, the more crafting you do, the more insane stuff you can get. And uh, the more absolutely crazy you can make your builds and the more crazy amount of damage you can fit on it with better cast rate or, or otherwise. And it's always great stuff. Anyway, enough rambling about the awesomeness of crafting. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. GG. We got it. Let's get it. You can always catch me on my stream at www.twitch.tv forward slash dark humility six to seven days a week of D2R action currently. We also play Project Diablo 2, of course, and uh, catch all of our guide videos as well and our guides on Max Roll and our guide videos on this YouTube channel. 
We make tons of guides. We have awesome guides for all kinds of insane builds. If you want to get inspired to play something that's not just a sorceress or a paladin, the, the sky's the limit. Just gotta know how to do it. Easy stuff. Till next time. See you guys later. Dark humility over now. Peace out. Smash it.